Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool. So the other day I was working on a camper and inside this narrow slot between some um, kind of interior walls was a junction box I needed to remove to work on the electrical inside of it. And basically it was, it was a small box that was held to the wall um, by a couple of what appeared to be deck screws. And this blue line kind of represents about my working channel. And I thought at first I could just get in there with my, you know, right angle Milwaukee here, you know, and stick it in. But as you can see, that's almost twice as wide as the workspace that I had to deal with. So um, I went to uh, my kind of trusty Klein tools. This is, this is the Slim Profile Mini Ratchet. Um, and it came with some bits. And guess what? More proprietary Klein bits, but in this case, I don't see any way around it, so I'm cool with that. Um, and this is the 65200. Um, neat little tool. I did a video a long time ago when I first got it. Uses a 72 tooth ratcheting uh, mechanism, five degree arc, and has a little flip switch for on and off. But anyway, I was trying to basically get to a screw, and I had very little room, and I could wedge my hand way in there. And I had others. Um, I've got this guy. Here's another low profile sort of, um, but the, it was just so coarse that I really, I couldn't, I can't get, this, this isn't turning here. You can see the, the tip uh, or the, the bit holder because that arc swing is not enough. Um, I mean, it's too much, requires too many, too many degrees. This one I can, you can hear that even so, if I've got it on, on the, the tool, even working in here, there's actually, you can hear several clicks. So I was able to kind of wedge my hand in. Um, and then at first I used this spinner. So I'll slide this closer, move my hand to the side so you can see it. And I, I was able to use this. Might be coming out, let me put it back. There we go. So I was able to kind of spin this in until I hit resistance. And then I was able to kind of toggle this back and forth. I was, you know, kind of pushing on it. It's hard to do with the camera, but basically operating it a click or two at a time like this. And I thought there's gotta be a better way. Why couldn't I just have a longer handle? If I had a longer handle, well, I would have to get rid of this ring and I might be maybe out here, probably not. Um, you know, if I, I looked at that, that arc swing of a, of a longer handle. But then I thought, well, what if it articulated? And so I went down to the shop and I started playing around. Um, and if you're like me, you've got tons of parts. I have, I have a whole shelf full of different bins like this full of stuff. I've got, you know, some higher end stuff for building different apparatus or if I'm testing things. And so I grabbed some, um, some different couplers and a, a harness here. And um, I ended up building something. What I did is I had some, some kind of rubber spacers. This one was too big. This one was too small. So what I did is I cut up one of these bigger spacers and ended up um, kind of slicing it down and, and chipping off the edges so it fit. So I created that piece um, and then I put the harness or the collar here into it and dropped a bolt down. Um, this is actually threaded on one end, I think, maybe both. So I, I want to find a way to um, keep that a little simpler, but this is where I'm at. So I, I've got this system. Um, and what you'll notice here is this does pop out. So I was thinking maybe if, if I could get some washers in there, or a fender washer or something to uh, hold it, that's later. But anyway, so I built this thing. Uh, this is fine threaded. So I had to get a stud coupler here to um, drop, um, drop in one end, opening up a coarse thread in the other. You can see that. So a, a fine to a coarse. And that opened it up into being able to use these different um, collars, these or, or threaded collar couplers. So then I could put this guy on and try my proof of concept. So there it is. And um, I would be able to get into a space um, here and wiggle this back and forth like that at a distance. If there was some actual vertical room, and sometimes that's the, the slot 
is only in one direction. If I could get out here, then I could really do some, uh, some work. And I thought of different ways to try to hold this in another, another tool, maybe an inflatable balloon or something that, you know, you could pressurize to push down, but you can actually generate quite a bit of force here with a simple tool. And I thought, gosh, you know, how hard would it be to make an electric one? You know, here's a good one, Klein. Uh, you just make a little add on piece for your existing tool and sell a million of them. Um, and I thought, well, you know, what if I, I made an electric one? I'm in this deep, I might as well keep playing around. So I got more parts, was, was exploring different options. Is there any way to hook this up to something I already have? I can't spin it, so it's gotta be articulating. Well, what does that? Um, I don't know, a Sawzall? So um, I, oh, by the way, Klein, I'm still waiting for that bit you said you'd send me. This, uh, it's number five Penelope. Um, it's been since Christmas. Anyway, so I, I went in and grabbed uh, some of my parts. I've got some reciprocating saw parts for different things. These are the ones I haven't broken yet. Um, Milwaukee makes some, you can get a reciprocating scraper. Um, but I have this adapter. And what this does, I can show you here, is it uses that quick lock mechanism to hold, um, a tool to a mount that fits into something like a Sawzall. So I got that and I did a review or, an, or a, a, a notification kind of video on this a long time ago. Um, so anyway, I've got that piece. So I got, got my little Sawzall or hacksaw here. I thought it, this would be a, plenty of power for what I'm working with and dropped this on. And then it was, how do I couple this to um, to something out here. And it turns out if I shove this in, cause this is about a quarter inch, um, threaded rod, I can easily slide it in, but it pops right out. So the solution was to get on or make a copy of this onto a threaded rod. So I just marked it off, got on the, uh, um, I've got a little belt sander and ground this down to make a um, basically a speed lock on a collared rod. So now I can drop that in and I had to test that out. And that's in there nice and snug. You can see I'm jerking or yanking this thing up and down. It's not coming out. So then I had to adapt this to fit it, which is pretty easy since it's a standard um, and I'll, I'll run a smaller rod here to show you. Does this work? Yeah, works really well. Uh, if you need a tool like this, so I'll drop this in here and make sure it's in there snug. So here we go. Look at that. So if I put this on, well, except my screw isn't going down because this throw of the saws or of the hacksaw here isn't big enough. The movement here isn't the five degrees that I need, even at nine, even when this is at a 90 degree, because obviously is less when you're at a different angle. So I grabbed a different one. Here we go. We've got the M18 instead of the M12. And so I throw this thing in, clamp it down. Make sure it's in there. There we go. And now I'm going to put that on the, on the screw. Got to get the angle right. Um, so I'm actually exploring putting something like this on where I have some, uh, some ability to change the angle. Right now everything is, has got to be lined up, but uh, that's next. Or maybe Klein will do it. I mean, here I'm offering this tool to you. So here it is. And then once I start going with this one, you can see it's actually drilling that or screwing that in. It's slow given all of the moving parts, but sometimes that's all you got.
There we go. So if I look at this at the rotation, I'm guessing it's about one revolution per five seconds. So it's going to take a little while, um, you know, to, to get that in. But anyway, as I was uh, frustrated trying to get my hand wedged into this narrow corridor, thinking there's got to be a better way, this, this became kind of a simple option because I can easily just wiggle that back and forth. Maybe add a light. I don't know. There's all kinds of options here. Plenty of room for innovation, but this is where I was at, um, and it, playing around, it works. Um, I'm excited about, you know, upgrading it, but it'd be nice if there was a company that really wanted to develop a good one and send me a free copy, you know, for giving you the idea. I did look online for any kind of an articulating screwdriver, and I couldn't find anything like this. So let me know in the comments. If you know about something like this, if you built something like this, if you have other features you'd like to see, you know, or a better solution for um, putting this thing together, uh, to let me know. I do have, once I've gone to the, uh, you know, the ability to move around between pieces at the end, I mean, there's, there's a lot of options here. So I'm kind of excited to to see, uh, you know, what, what might transpire. I have to have more of these studs in order to go back and forth between the different, um, kind of the different potential pieces, as you can see from, actually, is that one the same? I don't remember. Some of these are, there's a, a lot of possibility here. Because then if I went into, you know, that might give me the, the articulation I don't know. Anyway, let me know what you think. And with that, Doc out.